The second way God gives us courage is through righteousness. Verse 20, Yahweh dealt with me according to my righteousness. According to the cleanness of my hands, he rewarded me. Verse 24, Yahweh has rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands in his sight. This is hearkening back to Psalm 15, Psalm 24, where God says, who can ascend his holy hill? Only those with a clean hand and a pure heart. And of course, Psalm 24 answers the question and says, nobody can ascend God's hill except God's holy king, the ascendant of David. He's the only one with clean hands. So what's going on here where David says, the Lord has dealt with me according to my righteousness? Is David, one commentator refers to this as Santa Claus theology. That David says, I've done good, and so God's doing good to me. Had I been naughty, God would have sent his hail after me. But since I was nice, God's given me nice things. You know, the, the Catholic would look at this kind of passage and see in here their concept of righteousness. In Catholicism, righteousness is what you do. It's your work, your, uh, what you accomplish in your life, your good moral work that is, of course, fueled by your faith. Your faith fuels your moral work. That moral work constitutes your righteousness. And it's, I would say, not the biblical definition of righteousness, but I do grant you that a, a kind of a surface reading of these verses, it seems like that's what as David is saying. It seems like he's saying, I'm doing my works, and that is my righteousness, and God is now dealing with me according to the righteousness that I've earned. But that would go against so much of what Scripture says and is so very unlike David. And more to the point, it's not at all what you actually see in David's life, is it? When you read 2 Samuel, you do not end that book going, man, this guy had a righteousness of his own from his own works, and God dealt with him according to that. I mean, do you? 2 Samuel is all about David's sins. I mean, his kingdom right in the middle of it with Bathsheba and the murder of Uriah and then his, his apathy towards Absalom and which leads to the death of Absalom and David getting exiled and David knew that he was being punished by God for his own sins doesn't he you've got the people spitting at him and cursing at him and his his secret service says you want us to take those guys out and David says no this is God who is perhaps working on me purifying me the end of second Samuel is the census where David sins against God and then God ends up showing him mercy. I mean, you cannot look at David's life and say God dealt with him as if his righteousness was his own deeds, like his own deeds deserved. The better way of understanding this is to say, you know what, this is the guy who wrote half of the book of Psalms, okay? So he has theologically precise language. <laughs> Let's give him some theological precision here. Righteousness in the Bible is not what you accomplish with your own hands. Righteousness in the Bible is how you live out being in a right relationship with God. You are in a right relationship with God through faith. God declares you to be righteous based upon your faith, independent of your works, independent of your deeds. You offer nothing to your righteousness except the sin that makes it impossible. A non-believer cannot be righteous by the biblical standard. Our hearts are idol factories, not righteousness factories. Our hearts produce sin, not righteousness. Ever since David fell into sin, the world fall, uh, ever since Adam fell into sin, the world falls into sin. You're born in sin. You're born without a righteousness of your own. And you cannot merit a righteousness of your own. There's nothing you can do to be righteous before God. So you don't earn righteousness by keeping the law. You recognize that you're breaking the law means you're unrighteous. You then place your faith in God who gives you an alien righteousness, a righteousness that's outside of you. God declares you to be righteous based upon your faith in God, specifically your faith in the Savior, Jesus Christ. And the righteousness of Jesus who led a perfect life, that righteousness is then given to you. So your sin goes to him and his righteousness goes to you. And that becomes your righteousness. And God deals with you on the basis of your righteousness, which is actually the righteousness of Jesus Christ. So one option is that David, you know, hit his head and forgot all that and wrote this paragraph. The other option is that David knows all that because he's written Psalms about this theology. And he's availing himself of that. And so what he's saying is that he is righteous by his faith in God and his faith in the Savior, which he's going to talk about at the end of this psalm, by the way. Spoiler alert, the Savior's coming. He's going to write about this saying that God makes him righteous by faith in the Savior 
and now he's living out that righteousness. That's the Christian way of viewing righteousness. That God makes you righteous by his own free gift, not based on anything you've done, just by your faith. He gives you his righteousness, and then you live it out. And then as you're living out the righteousness that was a gift to you, you're walking in God's way. And when you're walking in his way, you don't have to fear sin. You've been justified by God. What David is saying here is you have a righteousness that's not yours if it's your faith in the Savior that brings it to you. And if you have that righteousness and you are living it out, you don't need to worry about sin. You might have a lot of troubles, but your sin is not one of them if you have your faith in Jesus Christ. But the Christian who places faith in Jesus but is still sinning, still harboring unconfessed sin, of course we all still sin, but is still harboring unconfessed sin in his heart, that Christian has trouble. That person couldn't say what David says here. That person knows that his sin being exposed and is just around the corner. Another way of saying it is David between 2 Samuel 11 and 2 Samuel 12 did not have this kind of courage. His bones were wasting away, he says in Psalm 32. He was, he was not a man of courage. He was a man of fear because he was harboring sin in his heart. But when he confessed it, the Lord showed him mercy and forgiveness. And so David goes on here. With the merciful, verse 25, you show yourself merciful. With the blameless, you show yourself blameless. With the pure, you show yourself pure. This is Titus 1, verse 15. To the pure, all things are pure. But to the defiled and unbelieving, nothing is pure. To people who don't have faith in Christ, the whole world is a pit. The whole world is a cesspool and they can get sucked in at any point. But for the person who has placed their faith in Christ, they don't walk around fearing the ambush around the corner. Everything in the world is pure because they are pure. They've been forgiven from their sins. They're walking in the Lord's path. They have confidence in him. So do you see how if you have confidence, if you have courage in God because you recognize that your righteousness is a gift from him, that gives you boldness. If you're wrapped up thinking you've got to earn your favor with God, you will not have boldness. But if you rest on the righteousness that is a gift from God, if you're humble before him, verse 27, you will be saved by him. But if you're proud before him, he will bring you down. 